Hello and welcome to episode 38 of series 4 of Master League Story Mode. Now before we get into this episode, I just want to flag up a little bit of extracurricular reading for you. If you're as much of a Corinne Diacra fan as I am in real life. Obviously she's now managing the uh, French national team, the women's French national team. But uh, yeah, if you want to read a little bit about her and her background, there is an excellent article written by one of my favourite journalists, Guardian journalist Amy Lawrence, who's also written a really, really good book called The Invincibles about Arsenal's Invincible season, which as an Arsenal fan, obviously, I'm a big fan of as well. Uh, she's written a really good article recently, so Google Amy Lawrence, Corinne Diacra, and uh, have a read yourself. But there's some great quotes in it. As I mentioned at the beginning of this, Corinne Diacra is an inspiration. She's a trailblazer as a woman coaching in the man's game. And uh, some of the quotes from her are really interesting. And one of my favourite quotes is Corinne Diacra talking about the differences, or if there are any differences between a man and a woman as a manager. And she says, football-wise, it's exactly the same. In doing all of my coaching studies and badges, I've never, ever had any training module that says, if it's women, then this is how you coach. Or if it's men, then that is how you coach. We are talking about football. Obviously, men and women have specific characteristics, but the only real difference is physical, athletic. And I love that quote. It's great, because... You know, there's no reason why a woman couldn't be a manager at the top level. You don't need to have played in men's football to understand football to a level to be a good manager. And Trini Yakra has proved that at Claremont. And, uh, well, I mean, one day maybe she'll get another job at a men's club. And if not, you know, hopefully she's just one of many female managers who do get that chance. And that's what we're rooting for here at Pest Story Mode. Absolutely we are. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's have another little focus about how we're doing, how long we've got left. Well, we've got four games left. Four massive games that will uh, paint the story of this season. Lose these four, and well, we're out of the Europa League. Fail to pick up all the points in all four? That could well be the case as well. Let's remind ourselves of the standings. Well, we are four points ahead of Mets, who we do play in these last four games. Bordeaux also sniffing around, they're only five points behind us. And with the quality they have, you can absolutely see them winning their last four games. So, you know, it's going to be tough and we do not have any margin for error at the moment. Let's go and take a look at the teams for the first game today. Who are we playing again? We are playing Montpellier. Where are they in the league? They're 14th with 11 wins this season. Okay, let's, uh, let's go and take a look at the sides. Oh, it's getting down to that point of the season where I start to feel like a physical fear of playing these games feel genuinely worried about the outcome of this one. Well, luckily, we've got Jan Caramo back today after his suspension. He pops in. Pesetto back out onto the wing. That's fine. Ivy Lopez failed to impress coming on as a substitute. Not entirely convinced about him. Now, some of you will probably notice once we get the game going that Zagadou doesn't have the new face that he has in the new data pack. And there's a good reason for that. Because unfortunately, Konami have made the interesting choice to remove a lot of the free agents completely from the game. Completely wipe them. And uh, I have on good authority that there's a there's a chance, at least, and that's enough for me, that that would mean that Olivier and Cham and Johan Gufran would come up as player removed if I was to do the update. So I'm not going anywhere near the internet or any sort of updates ever again, pretty much. I've had to just disconnect my broadband box. And uh, we're now just going to be getting information through the newswire in this house because, yeah, no more updates for us, no more data packs. We can't risk losing our favourite, one of our favourite players, Olivier and Cham. So that's why there's no Zagadou face. But, uh, you know, we can live with that. It's not it's not a bad likeness anyway. So the only other worry here is our Sibiadi on a downward arrow. <sighs> this is tough because we don't have a right back and Saavedra only comes in at the 68 there, but we'll give him a chance. He's a great player, we know that. I look at Montpellier and I'm pretty sure actually we lost to Montpellier earlier in the season. I remember Sio and Ninga being a horrible, horrible duo to play against. They've also signed Ainsley Maitland-Niles from Arsenal. That's an interesting one. He's already up to 71 overall rating. He'd be a great signing, actually. So we can maybe have a look at him. And they've got a strong defence and a strong keeper. It's not going to be an easy game. And it's one that we absolutely need to win. Come on. So in the last episode, we mentioned that it is squeaky bum time in the league. And absolutely, there is squeaking going on all around this stadium. But that led me to think, what? Where does that expression come from? I know it's an Alex Ferguson thing. I know, I know he was the one who famously said it. What does that mean? I, I, you know, I understand... Your bum clenching in moments of fear. And then where's the squeak coming from? Is that is that some worried flatulence? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that is some serious fear. But I'm starting to feel it a bit, actually. So uh, listen out. Ninga now. Danger man. All steps away neatly. Oh, back inside as well. Gets the shot in. Oh, Lasagna will be there for the finish. It's not Lasagna. Oh, it's Lasagna. <laughs> oh, dear. Not a good start. We knew Montpellier would be a threat. 
Oh, he stepped away from them too easily, and then Zagadou just went the wrong way. Ruben Duarte was not there to pick up the rebound, and Bernardoni pushes it straight back in to the Montpellier player. And at home now, in Clermont, we're behind. Not the start we needed. And Champs dips away from the CO. Fires it out to Passetto. Passetto under pressure from Sessignon. We'll keep it moving now. Saavedra whips in an early ball. Jan Caramo surely to level it up. <sighs> out of the team. Through suspension in the last game. And that is a massive chance. Saavedra playing out on the right. Whipped in a good ball. He's always so good at those early crosses. And that is poor. Definitely needed to work the keeper there. Oh, Saavedra does really well there. Now Pesetta will bring it forward down this right-hand side. Sees Saavedra making the run. Caramo into Saavedra. Chips it in, back in, looking for Jan Caramo. It's come off a defender there. It is the first corner of the game. Livian Chan. We haven't scored many goals from corners this season. Zagadou will jump for this, though. Goes all the way through. Didn't touch anyone in a Claremont shirt. Another good chance there, though. It's a good ball into Co Once again... Oh, the link-up is there. The shot well wide this time. That's such a dangerous front two. I'm surprised they're not doing better this season. Oh, and Cham nicks it really well. Now Caramo. Koyalapuk. Oh, couldn't quite find it. Doolin will have a go. Keep possession. Duarte spins it wide. Saavedra. Out of position today. Easy first-time ball into Passetto. Down the line looking for Jan Caramo. Koyalapuk to aim for in the box. Low ball in. Remy cuts it out. Sessignon gets away from Passetto. Now Saavedra. There's space now for Roussillon. Into the box. Saavedra trying to get with him. Lasagna at the far post. Oh, it's an incredible save. Double save there. Oh, my word. I thought that was going to be 2 0. And this game would surely be over then. Koyalapu steps inside of Shakiri. Oh. Let me lose out there. Ah. Well, I mean, that was. That was squeaky bums. Oh, lovely passing here from Montpellier. Ninga steps away from Doolin. Lovely pass from Co. The back heel into Rousson. Now Sessignon. Well into Nem trying to close him down. He'll get it in. Bernardoni can only punch. Back into Ninga. Oh my god. No, how did you not get to that? How did he not get to that? Bernardoni scrambles it again. We're really struggling here. This is a really tight and tough game. Nem won't get to that. Oh my god. We're chucking it away. Chucking it away. CO, oof, just everything's falling from there. Luckily, that's not a penalty. What is happening? We are under fire here. This is brutal. Koyalapu gets to that. We haven't seen much of him yet. Now Wellington Nem running into space. This is what we want to see. He's found a way through. He's going to put a ball in. Looking for Caramo with the header. Oh, he's put it wide. No. <laughs> Another massive chance for Jan Caramo. There's so many different Jan chants lined up by this Claremont home support, but... Somehow there. I mean, if anything, that's easier than the first chance. And that is not far wide, but still very much not a goal. Roussillon back inside to Sessignon. And now Saavedra struggling to get back. It's a good ball in. Decore, Passetto finds Nem. Have we got a break on here? No, we don't because it's half time. Well, a goal in the fifth minute for Montpellier. And they've been pretty dominant in terms of chances. We've not been able to create anything. Caramo's had two big chances. Two chances that he's missed badly. Oh dear, this is bad. This is bad. We need a point at least. Oh god. Oh, Sio nearly gets there ahead of Decore after letting it run. We're able to play it out from the back. Now Duarte looking to stretch his legs down this left hand side and he's got away from the San. Nice ball into Wellington Nem. Under pressure from Shakiri, steps away. Ball inside to Yang Caramo. Steps away. Caramo with the curling effort off the post. No way. Second chance effort is off the defender. Oh, he did so well. He deserves a goal. I mean, does he deserve a goal after all the missed chances? I don't know, but this was really well worked. Great footwork. The curling effort just off the post. Maybe a bit more composure on the follow-up. Would have been able to get that one. Oh, and they're breaking fluidly here, but Incham wins it back. The help of Wellington Nem. Now Passetto into Incham. Lovely work here. Ball into Passetto. He can slip it through to Koyalapu. I think he was offside. It was maybe the right ball. Just not executed properly. Maitland Niles heads it into Ninga. Zagadou anticipates the cross, but he can't get to that one. Sio with the. No! No way! <laughs> oh! This is it. 
This is uh, watch Europe slip away from our grasp in one game. I mean, we've done so well to get back into this, but Sio gets away from Saavedra, who's nowhere to be seen defensively. And then once again, it's Bernardoni pushing it back into the path of a Montpellier player. This is going to be uh, nil point today, unfortunately, and how is that going to cost us in our race for Europe? Probably quite badly. That's not the ball! Short passing, trying to work something here. Nem into Doolin. Doolin, Caramo. Oh, not a good ball, but we keep it moving. And Cham down the line looking for Passetto. Got Maitland Niles with him. Steps away from him again. Can he get the cross in? No, Maitland Niles blocks. Wellington Nem edge of the box can't get to it. Ah, oh, 63 minutes gone. And we're struggling now. Saavedra, great tackle. And now he'll bring it forward. Slips it into fellow South American Wellington. Nem, he loses out. Unlike him, we can keep it moving to keep the pressure on. Caramo steps away and then into trouble, but in Cham's there. He'll turn back inside and Cham will hit this one. Still, we put them under pressure. Still, the goal won't come. Duarte now wide. Into Nem. Back to Duarte. It's well worked here. Caramo will battle with Hilton. And they get it away. Saavedra. That's a foul. Surely referee. Nem into Koyalapu. Lovely ball down into Caramo. Steps inside. No more good defending. Decore now into Nem. We've got red shirts flooding forward. Can we do anything with this? Koyalapu. Ball in looking for Caramo. Hilton gets a good block in. Oh my god. Oh, he nearly passes it back into the keeper. For our first goal, 77 minutes gone here. This is slipping away massively. And Cham will put this one in. Caramo will look to redirect it. Ooh, that's a good tackle, Ref. No, no, no. Duarte, long ball. Looking for Caramo. That's some ball down the line. Caramo back inside. Can slip it into Koyalapu. Steps back inside. He's fouled there in the box. Surely, referee. Into Wellington Nem. Inside, another foul. Ref, ref. Come on. Doolin, edge of the box. His shot is blocked. Still going now. Oh, I can't believe this. Passetto into Caramo. Passetto. It's not going to fall, but it will fall for Olivier and Cham. The left foot of this. Ah, come on. Come on, Claremont. 85th minute. Five minutes left. We've been pushing and pushing for this, second, for this first goal. Oh, and it didn't look like it was going to come, but in Cham dug it out with the left foot. It's still on. There's still a possibility. It's very unlikely, but it still could happen. We really need that ball back. Really need that ball back. Oh, and that's a mistake. Caramo can slip in Koyalapu now. Three minutes left. It's a very long pass. Koyalapu inside. Can he get the shot away? No. Oh. Oh, it's fallen to... Ka Gufran, though. I can barely talk. Gufran into Nem. Chips it up looking for Jan Caramo. The header is poor. Oh. Had a chance there. Had a little sliver of hope. Koyalapu's tackle is a foul. And that's it. That's game over here in Claremont. Have we witnessed the downfall of this season? I can't believe it. We were working a chance there at the end. I think something could have happened. But it's all over now. Oh, this could be big. This could be really big for us this season. We were outplayed in that first half. There's no doubt about it. We played our way back in. But it just wasn't enough in the end. We kept pushing. And at the end, that Wellington ball into Caramo was maybe the wrong choice. He had more options than that. We just couldn't do enough when it mattered. Absolute heartache there in Claremont. Oh, and Metz climb up to within one point of us. That's fine, actually. Oh, hang on. No, Metz are in sixth. Did I say that at the beginning? Did I say they were the worry? It's obviously Bordeaux, but now they step within two points and that is a worry because a win for them and a loss for us in the next we'll see them step above us we've got a significantly better goal difference which at this stage of the season is basically a point which is the good thing we've got that to hang on because they've only got eight goal difference and Lille are there as well but they've only got seven goal difference so in terms of goal difference we're actually okay if we can get a win today then that will be a huge weight off our shoulders and I've got to say these last three matches have been a dip in form a real dip in form only one win the draw against Nice was a well-fought one. I mean, we were lucky to get that one win. Without that, things would be looking significantly worse now. 
And I think nothing says that more than Bernardoni being our highest average rating player for this month. Oh dear, and Encham only getting in there as well because he got the goal in the last game. And PSG dominating, absolutely dominating. To think we actually beat them this season. Right, this is it, Amiens. Now, I think they're doing pretty badly. And uh, another home game, this has got to be a win. Has to be a win today. And yep, I've just had a look, Amiens are bottom of the league. We are playing the worst team in Liga at home. And let's take a look at the sides. And Caramo's on a blue arrow. This has to be a win. It just simply has to be. Although, I seem to remember this being a pretty hard team to play against. And they do have the beast, Lucina Traore up front. And Kakuta out on the left. Just not a bad side, but they're bottom of the league. Bottom of the league. What can their team spirit really be like? Um, Pesetto was poor in that last game. So I'm going to give Ivy Lopez a run out in this one. It does affect our team spirit slightly. But pesetto has been a nothing man. Um, right, come on. Come on. So this Europa League spot, this final Europa League spot is likely to come down to the last game of the season with the way things are turning out. Today, this is the most vital three points, I would say, in our remaining three fixtures. Oh, dearie me. I mean, the way we played in the last one, if we do that again, the defensive play was so poor that even this team, especially with the big lad in the middle, could easily take advantage. And Cham into Doolin. Spreads it wide to Alcibiadi back in the side today. I think we did miss him, actually. Obviously a player who's been in great form. He can slip in Ivy Lopez now. Gets to this one first. Steps inside. Looks to slip a reverse ball into Yan Caramo. Can we start the game off well? Yes, we can. That's exactly what we needed. We needed a Yan Caramo goal. who has been out of form just when we needed him in the running. But uh, yeah, that was um, like a hot knife through butter early on. Ivy Lopez back in. Lovely turn. And then the reverse pass is perfect. And the Caramo finish is uh, simple. Lovely. That'll do. That'll do. Now let's build on that. Olivier and Cham now on the right wing. Steps inside of Gael Kakuta with ease. And he's going to look to spray a ball into the box for Koyalapu. Guano will get there, but Koyalapu's won it back. He'll step inside now. Can he find Caramo? He squares it into his strike partner. And the young guns are off to a firing start. No, that's not the right word. The young guns are off to an explosive start. There we go. That's sort of better. Um... Any other young guy? No, no, that'll do. Explosive start for the two young French strikers. It's Koyalapu showing great industry to win that back. And then uh, good composure here. Caramo, I mean, that's awful defending. Some other defender managed to get himself around the other side of Jan Caramo. But uh, two goals for Jan Caramo within nine minutes. Exactly the start we needed here in Clermont. Doolin wins that back very well. And now he's off through the centre. We'll whip it wide to Jan Caramo. He'll step inside of his man. And then back inside again onto his left foot. The finish just wide. The defenders all stepped off him there. I thought we were going to lose that. The dummy back inside wasn't his best. Good running from Doolin having won it back. Caramo inside. Lovely touch away from one. Back inside. And then the left foot finish just wide. He wants that hat trick early on here. 16 minutes in and it could have easily been three for Jan. Long ball out to Nathan is a good one. He'll take it down. Duarte gets an important foot in. But then the effort comes in off the post. Oh, wow. That was unexpected. I have to say that was unexpected. And now they're keeping the pressure on. Next Chelsea youngster, Gael Kakuta, puts it in. Traore luckily misses the header. And that is going to go out. Oof, bit of danger there. So we don't want to be uh, giving away a goal. That would be very, very stupid considering how strong we've looked so far. Oh. It's a nice ball down the line to Kakuta. Alcibiadi tracking. Oh, Kakuta does well to get away. Ball in looking for Traore. His header back. We'll find Zinga now. Charrier into Traore. The back heel. Is a great touch for a big man. A very big man and a very nice touch. Couldn't quite find the net though. Oh, Lopez. Poor, but Alcibiadi's won it. Now the ball into Caramo is on. Battle with Guano. Caramo gets away and slots home his third. With uh, with some vigour and accuracy there. And it's a uh, another hat-trick, I think, for Jan Caramo. He's definitely had one. But, uh, yeah, he'll be taking home the match ball today in a massive game for Claremont. This was a three points we could not afford to drop. I mean, there's going to be much more difficult games come the end of the season. But Jan Caramo on a blue arrow today. Muscled ahead of the centre-back nicely. It's a good ball for Alcibiadi. Good to have him back in the side. He offers so much from that right-hand side. And it's a great take on the chest, away from the defender. Came sliding in, but it was all too late and a great finish. 
Oh, Caramo nicks it back there. And now he's into the box. Steps inside. Can he make it four? Oh, the keeper. Oh, no. Still Caramo. Can he make it four? No way. Oh, still Caramo. Koyalapu now. No. Caramo. Oh, yes. And it's four in comical fashion there for Jan Caramo. Amions showing why they are bottom of the league. And Jan Caramo, well, I mean, I don't know. He won the ball back in the first place, got into the box. Two, three, maybe four shots happened. Koyalapu couldn't finish it. But then Caramo was there. It wasn't even the header that finished it. But it came off the keeper and he was able to put it away. I mean, that's one of the funniest goals we've seen this season in a very, very serious game. But now, with four goals in this first half, for Jan Caramo, can he go on and score more in the second half? Maybe a last-minute shout for Golden Boot is on if he keeps up like this. Wow, what a half. What a half. We needed to come out and uh, exert our dominance on this uh, very, very poor side. And Karin Diakra's uh, team have certainly done that. Five shots on target, four goals. Let's keep it going. So I can do in a foot race with Lucina Traore. It's like watching two Ents battle each other for pace. Never going to be a problem there. And we'll keep this moving. Sibiadi into Ivy Lopez. Not the right ball. But Nem's come away with it. Dulin into Caramo. Lays it off. Koyalapu delaying the ball. Koy Caramo into the box. Steps back in with the left foot. Oh, it's off the keeper. Could still get the rebound. Can he get his fifth? Throw in. Looking for Caramo. Oh, Caramo's won it back. Cuts back in. Still Jan Caramo. Will it be five here? Oh, very nearly. This guy is in incredible form today. This blue arrow is uh, really, really helping us. Oh, Caramo's won it back again. It's been an absolute pest. Lopez threw into Caramo. Can he get the fifth? Oh, has it powered off him that time. He's just so dangerous. It's been great defensively as well today. Decore, great challenge. Ivy Lopez as well. It's been good today. And Cham across pitch to Doolin. Caramo lay it off to Kyalapu. The link up is always there. Now Yan Caramo with the left foot. Oh, the keeper having to play incredibly well to prevent us getting any more with him. And here we are, full time here in Claremont in front of an absolutely ecstatic Claremont crowd. As Jan Caramo takes the match ball home with four goals today, all scored in the first half. And uh, he could have had five or six. He really looked capable of scoring any number of goals today. And this is a massive win for so many reasons. Not just the points, but also the confidence going into the massive game against Mets in the next episode. And uh, just the confidence to see this season out. Get that Europa League spot. And uh, Jan Caramo, well, he's struggled for goals in the last few games, including the suspension. He's not looked great, but today his finishing was uh, accurate and very, very consistent, which is exactly what we need. I mean, we did have eight shots on target in the end, and the uh, Amiens keeper actually did prevent a couple of great finishes at the end. But Jan Caramo gets a rare eight and uh, obvious man of the match with four goals. Lovely, lovely stuff. So there we go. Massive win today. Lille win. And Metz lose to St Etienne. I mean, that was a tough game for Metz. And that sees Lille as our closest competitor now. And we're now four points again above Mets, which is exactly what we needed. We need to keep them at arm's length for that big game in the next episode. And Bordeaux looks like they drop points as well. They're now five points behind us. It's ours to keep this spot. Definitely ours to keep. So here we are, next episode. It's away at Mets. And we've been offered the Bordeaux job. Oh, that's interesting. That is really interesting. That is a big side. That is a big side. Definitely one to consider. Green Diacra is uh, already getting a lot of attention and that is not surprising at all. So there we have it. And as we hoped, Jan Caramo has just snuck into a golden boot contention. Only four goals away now from Fakir. He's into that top three goal ranking. And uh, four goals for him in two games is definitely doable. We'd love that. We'd absolutely love that. But for now, Europa League is our priority. So join me in the next episode to find out whether we make it through into Europe next season. It's going to be an exciting one. I'll see you in a bit.